today guys this is Tony from Team Divine Pro here coming at you guys with a another improving your way Schwartz game video segment so today we will be talking about the clocking so uh like early game clocking and so like what what you should drop at your millet mulligan hand because uh the mulligan is pretty much the only way you get to get new cards out of your hand and what you want to do with them so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So early, we'll, well, it's mainly about the level zeros, but we'll, when you hit level zero, but we'll talk about just throughout the game when you should be clocking and how you should be doing that type of stuff. So that'll probably be one part, and then I'll probably add something else into this video when I figure it out. So let's get, I just shuffled the deck really quickly here. So then we're going to pick out an open hand, and we're going to see what we get. We get one of these. By the way, this deck is like missing three cards, but it's fine. Because it's just for demonstration purposes. Now, here, since we're starting at level 0, you always want to have a level 0 in a hand. And you would probably want to keep, perhaps, like the Climax combo cards. Say, if you have this one, then maybe I want to keep this. And then I would probably end up keeping the block as well. Because you can't always just clock these cards. But then, for instance, I will get rid of these, the level 2 and a Climax. Because you always drop... Best recommended tip for the Mulligan is to always drop your Climaxes. You... Because you don't want them to have them in your hand because you're probably going to just end up clocking them anyways. In this way, it gives you optional options to do it before then. So, we draw two cards. We get a zero. And we get a one. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, let's say we're going first. We're going to draw a card for turn. Okay, so now we have this card, these cards in hand. What do we clock? Well, we could either clock the level one or the climax combo card. Because we want to keep the level zeros in our hand. Our opponent, the level 0 again, is a long thing, and you want to conserve resources for that. So, I would probably clock in this case my uh, my max combo since I already have one, and the chances are high that I will draw into a uh, climax, and I still want to be able to use one. But I still want the block card, so we draw two. We draw two more of these boosters. Oh, clearly the deck is really stacked, I guess. So now, what do we do? We play it out. So, yeah, that's how you do it. So then, let's play it out. Say, for instance, our opponent has... We do that. We attack. We check. We get two. Then our opponent attacks us. We get reversed, because if they're good at this game, they will know to only attack one at a time, or to two, depending on what they want. So, let's say they attack with two. So we take one here, or we, and then we take two from the other person from the direct attack. Okay, and we climax off. See, uh, climaxes in a 50 card deck are around like six. You'll see one every six or seven cards if the math is right, because eight times six is 48, and then just since there's only two cards left, it's around like, yeah. I would say that, yeah. So you're going to see them a lot. Okay, so then you remove that. See, this is why we kept that grade zero in hand. So we at least have a level 0 to play next turn, just in case. So now we'll draw for turn. And, we'll, and we got a grade 0. That's good. See, playing at least 15 to 16, you always see level 0s, and they're never really dead. And then bring it on to this card, uh, and this one. The acceleration for the beginning of the game, like this card has the effect that reads, uh, once you place from hand, you can check the top card, and if it is a, if it's not an avatar or net, you put it to clock. That's good at level 0, because you want to... Uh, upgrade to level 1 as quickly as you possibly can so that you can hinder your opponent for setting you there so early or yourself and then this card has accelerate which is really good as well because it puts you to those levels and it's sometimes near like level 3 or when you want to you can do it so you can level up or you can also do it so that the heal card that you have like the card that lets you heal has uh, the possibility to actually heal something it doesn't just give you a minus because you wasted that effect so anyways, let's see what we would clock now. See, in this situation, since we already have two full boosters, we will we should clock the third booster since we don't need it. So we'll draw two more cards. Okay, so now we have new cards in hand. And uh, I think at this point, you guys get pretty much the good idea of... You don't want to keep doubles, and usually you'd want to keep the boosters unless... Uh, we'll just do another hand just to show off some more stuff. Because I'm pretty sure that every hand will be different, so we want to do a few test hands here. 
and I am shuffling in backwards. So, yeah, not much to say right now. Way Schwartz has been kind of slow, but it's still, you know, fun. Uh, you guys still need to tell me if you want to see a fate. Well, actually, tell me in the comment section below what type of deck you want to see me profile next. Because I think I might be able to do the Vocaloid one, which is probably my next big idea here. And the Fate Zero, I'm not too sure about because, like I said before, you need the other cards from the other sets to make the deck really good. And on top of that, Fate Zero is more of the deck where you have to have the other archetypes to support it because some of the other cards are a lot better than the other ones. Although they do play a unique card, like I was looking up some of them earlier, there's this, this blue one, I can't remember the guy's name, the one that has Assassin's Servant, who's Assassin's, uh, not Servant, uh, Master, who can change at level 1 to 3, which is pretty cool, but... Anyways, let's go back, so our hand, what do we draw? We draw a climax, we draw an event, we draw a 0, we draw 1, and we draw the booster. So, ideally, we, what do we want to do? We want to keep the level 0s. Unless you have lots of these boosters that and you already have two, you probably want to just keep the two and then ditch a third one. And then what do we do ditch? So well, since we already have a block, it's a character that's retrievable. I'd probably say ditch the the character block, but keep the event block since you can't retrieve that later on. And just send off these two cards. Because you don't have to send two, but I'm thinking in this situation that perhaps two is a lot better since you only have one zero right now. And you kind of want to have more or more clock fodder because... Like this, you with the mulligan, what it allows you to do is get some clock fodder early on before they start attacking you if you're going second. Which is really important because you want to have something that you can clock and you don't want to like have a bunch of bunch of cards that you can't clock like you wanna you'd wanna hold on to because of the level ones. But in reality usually you end up clocking something. So anyways, clock fodder, probably said two. Usually if your head's really good, they just said one, but or none, but I usually said two just because I usually end up with hands like these. So I've said two. Oh yeah, just keep the event. Unless if you like playing Truth of like the Void Genome or anything, that's like a higher that this is since this is a one one, it's a block. I'll keep it. And then we take two. And we'll see. We got another one. Since we read three blocks, we are about to see them a lot. So now let's say we're going second. He will attack with for two. We'll take two. And we climax. See? Climaxes are everywhere. We draw for turn. See? Clearly I did not... This deck is really not well shuffled, even though I've shuffled it a lot. So, going back to our previous segment, when to clock the climaxes, this would be a great time to clock climax. So we clock one right now. We draw two. And see? We see the Kirito solo player card. Now, this card read that if it's the only Chera, if you have no other characters in hand or anything, I mean on field, then this card gains plus 50 in one level. Now, the reason why I dropped this down, if you saw my previous deck profile, to 3 was because of situations like this where I have a bunch of level 3 zeros, and I wouldn't have any room to play this because I want to play the Suicider, and I'd want to play the Booster, but I can't because, you know, I can't. It's just bad sometimes. So I would probably just probably end up placing... Depending on their field, you can either go one of two ways. You could go this way, the that way, or you could do this one. But you could place both, but that'd be kind of hindrance because this would be just a 3k body, it'd be a 3k vanilla. So in this situation, I would probably just wait. Since they probably only have one guy, I just put out the Kirito, then attack, and then I'd end my turn there. Because then they have to do something, they have to find something that's bigger than this 4k body that's a level 1. So they can't suicide it, and they can't reverse it, with the suicider, and you know, it just gives you hand options for hand advantage. By the way, you can only have 7 cards in your hand. I kind of figured that out the hard way by realizing it's like, oh, I have like 10 cards in hand. Oh, whoops, I can only have 7. So yeah, you gotta discard. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh, where you gotta discard kind of during the turn. It's not like Cardfight Vanguard at all. And uh, let's say they do get over this somehow with a 4k body or some climax. You're gonna do it. Take three here. Yeah, another thing, they're probably gonna have to use climaxes to get over this, which is a good way to waste their resources on your stuff. So we'll take two more from the, another attack. We'll climax. And we'll take two more from another one. 
like this. They're, we're forcing them, also with this card, we're forcing them to push it to push us to high clock to push so that we can go early level up. And so we are. So let's move on to next drop. Draw. Okay, so here we have a level 2. Finally, it's about time. Uh, now, clearly, you want to clock the level 2. It's really straightforward. If you see anything that's not level 1 or level 0 that early on you won't be using, I would suggest to highly clock it, even like cards like these, even though it does become level 2. Chances are you might not get it off, so I'd probably just recommend clocking it and then realizing later on to search for it or retrieve it. So then we draw 2. See, we get another level 3, so it's pretty good. And then we level up, so... Actually, you're not supposed to draw until after leveling up, okay. So, leveling up, look at how to level up is looking at your hand. Since I, I do play 4 colors in the deck, all the rainbow, but I only play blue at level 0, I would not suggest clocking this, because it runs no porpoise at all into the purpose... Wow, poipus. Okay, uh, at all in the game. So just... Don't clock it. So, like, if I say if I switch this out for the green, and I'm like, oh, look, a level zero. I could clock that. No, you do not want to put that in the level because it is useless there. So, in this case, since I have a gosh awful hand here, I'd probably just go off with. No, you can't. I would not suggest doing the climax, so we could take that out. I would not suggest taking the Kirito because he's blue and you do not run a lot of blue. Although, if you are running a, a blue variant that has like a decent amount of blue, that'd probably go for it. Although playing four colors is crazy if you play all the three up to the three levels. So, huh, this was actually really tough. It hasn't happened to me before. Since I need level ones a lot, I'd probably keep the level ones because you do not need to that. And then probably since she's a climax combo, I'll keep her the two of her in. You can always just take one, put one here, or you can take this one, which I'm probably going to end up doing. Since I do not have any level one reds, but then as I find out, I do, which is an issue. So, anyways, guys, let's do one more hand, and uh, yeah, we'll do one more hand because this video is be kind of wishy washy again. I gotta start coming up with more stuff because kind of running dry here. Okay, one more time. Here we go. Yeah, so I think I'll break this up into two different segments, kind of. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. What do we get? Okay, so in this situation, we have two block cards, and we have a retrieve. So clearly, first thing to do, get rid of climaxes and the level three, since we are going to play be playing a level zero game. And since we do not have any level zeros here, and we do, but you do want to keep a block. But since this is a level zero, and it's a really good block card. I would suggest at least keeping one, but you want to put the other one in there so you can have you heighten your chances of at least getting the level zero. Because if they attack you, and it has happened before, I do not have any, any level zeros in hand, and they attack me, they get the two zeros, and then I cannot draw zero for the turn. So I'm just open to attacks. So oh look, see, the Kirito solo player is also in there. For those chances that you do not get any other level 0 except him, or you don't want to use cards like this since you don't have the stock, so you just play him, and then you're at least good for one turn. See? So, pretty decent hand now. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Uh, yeah, so, uh, that's how it is. I wouldn't, I, I think I'll play it out just one turn, so let's say we go first, we'll draw for turn. We will clock most likely the, uh... I think I'd clock. See, I'm thinking about if I draw the climax combo, the girl for her. But this is a lot better of a card. It's a body, so I'd probably just clock the climax. Even the, like that's what you have to also keep in mind, guys. If you have a climax combo, then you have to think about when you drop the climax. You prefer going around for the other one. Like I, don't, I know that there's a I have I play the climax combo for the retrieve, but she's at level two, so I don't have to worry about it as much. Whereas, if I play the Climax combo for level 1, it's a lot harder to get it off later on in the game since it's not as strong as it would be during early game because the searching abilities in like the Inori card are a lot better early game than late game. That's why I'm just thinking about it. 
Okay, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that will conclude this video, I guess, on the mulling and clocking of the early zero game to late game. Late game, I would not... Late game, you should have all the colors in your hit, in your thing. Uh... Yeah, probably, yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, guys, uh, character blocks, I just realized. Uh, thanks. Shout out to, uh, P, uh, whatchamacallit, Climax Combo, their channel. Uh, tell them I sent you, though, please, just like last time. Uh, I don't want to be giving out free shout outs just yet. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, they helped, they helped me remind, they helped remind me that client character blocks, like these ones, the ones that have that are look like characters and they have power levels and they're not event cards. Here, I'll show you the difference between the event climax, the, the event block. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is. Event blocks like these do not play the the what you call it. They do not play the uh, numbers. So this you can tell is an event because let's be honest, event cards look different from character blocks. In character blocks, turns out that even if you don't do not have the color at level, you can still play it as long as you meet the requirements written on the card. So say you had this in in level, but which would be really crazy. Let's switch that out. Uh, that that'd be like a really bad situation. But like, yeah, you you have that, and you're at level zero. You can play this because it's a character block, and that's the rule. But then I think events, if I'm not if I'm not wrong. Pretty sure you can't play them without having the color, since events need the color to be active, but the characters do not need their blocks. Anyways, probably have to check the rule book on that, and then I'll get back to you guys on that ruling. But anyways, that's what I am believing it is right, and yeah, I think that's right. Anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this segment of Improving Your Way Towards Game, episode 6, I think? Yeah, 6? Wow, it's already been 6. Uh, I will come back to you guys with some more informative things, like, uh, I don't know yet, I have to check it, what I would want to do, probably, I'll probably end up doing something around the, uh, I don't know, probably something different this time around for Way Shorts, that Improving Your Way Shorts segment, because it has been getting a little bit more wishy-washy since I've noticed. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, like, uh, do whatever you want to do. It does help out a lot if you uh, subscribe and like and everything, guys. Uh, with any, this, without further ado, this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro signing off.